Palms in Paradise. Fun little title. Okay, here is a painting that I did some a couple of weeks ago in Hana Mountain. I was out on a kind of rainy, windy day, set up under a big beach umbrella with rain showers coming and going. And I just wanted to really zoom in on my friend Albert's coconut trees and the banana plant in the foreground. Let's go. I'm going to do something similar to that today. I'll stop this here in a moment, set up my 24 inch by 20 inch canvas and get ready to launch into a really quick colorful impression of coconut trees. Okay, here we go. This is showing you something that I'm going to be painting today, a rendition similar to this, coconut trees in Hana. This was done on the other side of Maui. In Hana, away from Kihei, where my wife and I live. This is the lush tropical side. So, in just a moment, I'm going to take this canvas off and I'll create something very similar to it really quickly and we can have a really fun painting session using my beautiful golden open acrylics. I'll show you what they look like here and then I will actually let me go in here first. This is pretty much what the painting is going to look like. I'll sort of zoom in on that and here we go. Here are my golden open acrylics. This little, well, this palette here is a collection of some of my favorite colors that I paint with regularly. This palette here are the colors that I buy from Golden, which are the most saturated pure colors that I can get. I try to get pretty generally some of the most vivid pure colors I can. And then when I want to mix my own colors, I can get some really lively, uh, more pastel versions of paints that I want to be working with. I use these colors a lot, so it's easy for me to work quickly if I have them pre-mixed. So here we go. I'm going to stop this for now. I'm going to zoom in, get my new canvas ready, and get ready to go. Okay, here we go. My 24 by 20 canvas is set up and ready to go. Got my paint set up beneath it. Here's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use, just on an impulse. I decided to do a super vibrant undercoating using this cobalt teal, my golden open acrylics. So here we go. I'm just going to shut this off. It's not too exciting to watch the undercoating happen. So let me shut this off until I get that done, and then we'll launch into the painting. Okay, I also use some of this Titian Green Pale, and I'm going to uh, mix the two together. Well, maybe I'll put a little bit of violet to knock the color down just a little bit, and I'll launch into the background, and then we'll work from there. Here's my under-signature, my little message to the world, live with the happy heart and try and make it a better world. I go on and cover the entire background with that. And here I begin to rough in my composition using kind of a light paint mixture. It lets me make changes easily. Once I've got things laid out the way I want, I can lay into some thicker color and go from there. So here we go with the video. Here are my brushes I've been working with. And I'm just going to jump back into it kind of roughing in the composition, putting the coconut trees off center to give it a little bit more asymmetrical balance. So there we go. Uh, also, before I get too far into this, I want to do a little bit of background, sort of the suggestion of other coconut trees in the background like this that are not so they're kind of faded into the background. So I'm using kind of a blue, blue-violet to uh, just give the impression of some coconut trees off in the distance here. So 
So I'm, I'm choosing more subdued colors like this ultramarine blue light and some of this homemade mixture of permanent violet deep with uh, a lot of white in it. So it makes kind of a softer violet coloration to it. So here we go. This is kind of just going to rough in this this background here. And I think I'll go back to time lapse here a little bit. This is probably not as exciting as it might be, but see how I'm for now, see how I'm here's where the trunk of the coconut tree is going to be coming right down here like that. Uh, this other trunk is going to be coming down here. I'm using some really interesting blue in here. Just, I don't know, I just feel inspired to do it. There, some of that blue that I might usually use in an ocean. <laughs> and, and there we go. And I like to put more, a little bit more light up here, but I want the, the sunlight to be glistening off of these leaves. So for that reason, I'm going to make the background not too light. If it's the lighter it is, the less contrast there is to the day, to the uh, light, the shimmering light that I want, I want to put on the palm leaves. So here we go. I'm just going to Just going to put in a little more violet background that's not super light, super pale, so that we'll have some nice contrast when it comes to the palm fronds, the palm leaves right in here with the um, sunlight glistening off of it, off of them. I'm using a pretty good sized brush here, which is enabling me to work pretty quickly. A lot of this is I'm thinking about it and a lot of it I'm just feeling into it. Feeling feeling about it. <laughs> kind of feeling what it, what I drawn to do and and I'm kind of being pretty loose about it here which is really fun. It's fun not to get stuck in the details too much. It's an art for sure. So since there might be a little bit of sky, a little bit of action going on in the sky, let me see what I want to do here. Just some of this really nice teal color. I'm going to deepen the colors a little bit more down below here so that uh, we get some nice contrast to what's going on up above. That's a pretty nice lively violet color there. See, I'm grabbing some of the paint here, pushing it up into here a little bit further. And whatever I take away here, it's just lesser amounts of it on my paintbrush, so it gives me the chance to just shift the tone of the background here a little bit without globbing on heavy amounts of paint, or without having to pre-mix it, really. Here we go. In just a moment here, I'm going to step back 
and look from a distance and see what I'm seeing and see what I'm inspired to do next. Um, I'm pretty, pretty close with the background at this point, I think. Let me take a look here in a minute. Oh, I'm having so much fun. I love color. I'm really having fun with playing with color here. So let me step back. I'm going to look at it from a distance and um, see what I want to do. Nope. It's a windy, stormy day here, by the way. Okay. There we go. So one of the things about coconut trees, I'll just keep going on this filming for now, uh, is that the the heart of the leaves coming out of the tree have a really kind of like an ochre coloration, pale green ochre sort of. That would be the heart of the, the leaves coming out with that lighter, lighter color there. I'm going to do this palm tree and this one. This will be my last, which will overlap these because it's the closest and largest one. So I'm basically starting from the distant background there, moving, gradually moving forward to the more foreground trees and leaves and all that. So there we go. There are gonna be some areas with really deep shadows under here. Those areas will will really make the, the sunlight coming off the leaves really pop. Using a little bit of straight ultramarine blue here. And over here, just get some nice contrast. This palm tree here is going to have some really nice coconuts hanging down, partly in front of the trunk here, and then some others, sort of dark ones over here in the shadow. I'm rolling my brush, turning my brush to get some of the darker paint that's still on the edges of the brush. There we go. That gives a little more dimension. Coconuts are sort of like a, a football shape, a little bit, as opposed to perfectly round balls. So, and also coconuts have the bigger, older coconuts down low. What happens up in here are the really small coconuts. And then above that, let me grab another brush. Above that are some either baby coconuts or actually some of the, uh, the flowers. Well, I have that nice pale yellow on here. I'm just going to touch a few of these spots where I want a little bit of that color. I like having this grouping of three. It's kind of a nice balance to it. A little bit more of that pale yellow in here. Okay, switching to my another brush. 
Yeah, I want, I don't want to work with too small a brush, so I'm going to just use this one as my, my primary brush that I'm working with. It's a um, eight. Um, these brushes are power krill. That's one word, P-O-W-E-R-C-R-Y-L. They're by Creative Mark. They're a really fine brush. I like them a lot. They're really good for acrylics. And the brights, which is what I use almost entirely, give you a lot of flexibility. With a bright brush, they're short enough to give you um, some pretty good control on the brush. Um, they're flat, so you can get some pretty fine details like this. You get some pretty good, small, finer details out of this same brush. And also you can get some really <clears throat> broad strokes out of it too, like this. So they're really super versatile. And I don't even switch off that much. I can do a lot of detail with this one fat brush, fairly fat brush. Okay, we're gonna have a little shading going on under here. This is gonna be one of the palm fronds coming in front of this palm tree. Again, I'm gonna use some of this, um, the deeper colors. These, this is actually a phthalo blue. Use a little bit of that in here. A little bit of that hanging down behind the coconut, coconuts. And grab another brush. And here's some of this really nice, <clears throat> what's called green gold on these uh, open acrylics. It's a really nice kind of a warm, <clears throat> warm green. So look at, look at here, the palm fronds hanging down there, down through here. Kind of coming out across there, coming up over against the sky a little bit or background. And then I'm gonna <clears throat> launch into a few of the deeper palm fronds in here, the more shadowy ones. And then as I work forward to the foreground, um, I'll put the ribs in on the palm fronds and we'll see how that all looks here. I'm using some of this beautiful teal Again. Right up over the crown of the palm tree. There's normally if you're looking through through that area, it's pretty fairly dark. Depends on where the light is, but usually it's the light is kind of behind back a ways. This would be pretty shadowy. So Playing with it that way. Pretty shadowy in here. Here coming down. Then some parts of that will have some beautiful, beautiful light on it. Remember, I was mentioning that yellow ochre sort of, there we go, kind of arching out from the center of the palm tree here. I do have some videos about drawing palm trees, coconut trees, and those will give you some ideas of how I actually create three-dimensional looking palm trees in a pretty simple manner. So those are some pretty useful drawing videos. Deep 
shadows in here again behind the trunk of the palm tree. Let me step back and have a look here again. Okay, this is trailing off a little too much, so I'm gonna fix that a little bit. It's a really wonderfully humid day today, so everything's still wet. The background's still nice still wet a little bit it's kind of letting me really um, rework some parts of this that on most days I wouldn't have that option because it tend to dry you know pretty quickly So I don't really want these two trunks matching each other perfectly so this one will still trail in from an angle like like this see how I'm starting to do some sideways brush strokes on it you'll see in a couple minutes what that's all about and how effective that is you just have a few little kind of curved I tell the kids it's like smile lines on the trunk of the tree by having these, these kind of either horizontal lines or even better, the um, curved lines, like a little smile. As it gets lower down below your eye level, that becomes a more defined smile. As it gets up close to your eye level, they become horizontal lines. Now when the tree is overhead, they actually reverse and little frown lines curving the opposite direction. That's if you have a tree that's standing up fairly straight. You'll see if you look at coconut trees, that's one of the ways you can get it really looking three-dimensional, is accentuate the curve here, whether you're doing coconut trees or bamboo. I do the same thing with bamboo when I'm working with kids. Doing our drawing classes. Right, we're, we're doing all right here. I'm pretty happy the way it's coming along. Um, here's some, a little more detail in the palm fronds here. A little bit more light. Some of that pale, super pale light green, like that. It's gonna really show some of the highlights on the, on the leaves up here and the, where there might be a little more sunlight. I'm gonna use some of that color again, super pale yellow green to, to accentuate these ribs in the palm leaves. I step back again. Normally I step back really frequently. Here, so I'm gonna put the little uh, hint of the trunk of this smallest of the three palm trees. A little bit darker up underneath the canopy. Same thing in here, it's a little bit darker. where the trunk is hidden 
or shielded up in, inside the canopy of the palm leaves. There we go. I'm gonna have a little, the lighting will be kind of coming from this side. So as I get a little further into the painting, I will, I'm just gonna play with it a little bit here, but I'm gonna have some really shimmering light on the, on these palm leaves where it but there might be some reflected light off of them. I'm also gonna play with some nice light on the trunk of, of the trees here too. I'm using some really pale orange here. And also using that to accentuate these little curved lines on the trunk. We do the same thing over here on a big coconut tree. I'm going to grab a little bit of this super pale, almost white with a tiny touch of warmth in there, a little tiny bit of yellow. I may have to wait on this and make this one of the last things. When this is really dry, I'll be able to put in that shimmering light on the palm fronds a lot easier when, the, when everything is kind of dry. Taking a really pale violet here, letting that be my light on the tree that's set back a little further. So, I'm actually not just hitting random spots, I'm imagining where the light would be reflecting off of the palm leaves. I've spent a good bit of time looking at, at the cocoa palms at night and even taking some nighttime pictures of them. So it's helping me right now from kind of imagining where that, that light would be reflecting off the, the shiny cocoa leaves. I have some really vibrant magenta here, which I'm kind of having fun with here. In the, like as if it's the old um, leaves hanging down from the palm. And it could be that really uh, super magenta, or here's a really pale um, red, pinkish almost. So again, I'm going to use some, I've got a really nice, uh, almost what in some colors called prism violet. It's a, it's that permanent violet deep in the colors of um, golden open. So see how nicely that's making the, uh, the kind of curved lines on the trunk. I need it to be a little bit deeper or darker to stand out here contrast the background a little bit more. All along the, here's that pure permanent violet deep too. And I'll let some of that be on the, on the full shadow side of the trunk. Same thing here, a little bit of that, that violet uh, coming down the trunk on the shadowed side. And see how I'm using I'm not trying to make it a super smooth trunk. I'm letting it kind of be a little bit erratic and sort of might go along in one direction then shift a little bit, go along like that. A few more curved lines here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
step back and look again. There we go. Oh, well, I, while I'm at it, let me do a little bit more with the trunk on this. There are areas where you're looking through and you're seeing palm fronds that are way under the canopy here and more in the shadow. So I'm kind of darkening some of these palm fronds that are hanging down. I'm turning my brush and keep rolling the brush and paint just keeps coming out of it, sort of. If you, uh, you don't have to just keep scooping up and getting fresh paint. You can just roll your brush and get some more paint out of that, out of the bristles there. When you want it to be super dark or super intensely colorful, pure pigment, then you would get fresh paint loaded up on your brush. Now here's going to be a little, this is going to really pop some pure red in here. Now, as my paint has, my brush has less and less paint, I've got a little red left in here. So I want this secondary tree to be less intense in color. The same here, a little bit less intense of color. Here are these arching palm fronds. So instead of just plain yellow ochre, I'm taking some of this pale orange and let that be the ribs on a couple of these palm fronds, make them stand out a bit more. Again, rolling my brush, I keep rolling it to let that paint get pushed off the edge. Okay, stepping back again. We're just about a halfway, I mean a half hour into this, 29 minutes. So um, this is a little nondescript here. I wanna give it a little bit more life. So I will make kind of hint at some tropical foliage down in here. I'm getting some of that permanent violet, get some deeper colors in here, deeper tones. We'll get some nice blues interspersed with this violet. Give it a little more interest in here. Ultramarine blue there. Could have a little bit of foliage coming up in the foreground here. Let's just see what that looks like. A little bit more of the uh, This is that the green, we'll call it a yellow green, sort of. It's a really transparent color. The one, it's called green gold, that was the name. So there we go, that, because that's got more um, pigment and stronger 
greens in it, it kind of brings it forward of the, the trunk and forward of the background here. This is so wonderful because uh, the background's still a little bit wet. Now, if you're painting indoors, get a humidifier. You will not believe the difference it'll make. If you hu humidify the room you're working in, before you, even before you paint, but at least, you know, as you start your painting session, get some beautiful uh, humidity in the room. Your paints will dry, they'll take two or three times as long to dry if you use the humidifier. So don't overlook that as one of the most extraordinary, simple ways to work with acrylic paints. You can also use um, retardants, like these Golden Open, they do have a retardant, you know, I guess mixed into the paint, in all the paints, so they all dry slowly. But you can work with regular acrylics and a humidifier and get a kind of very similar effect. All right, I'm going to step back here in a minute. We're getting pretty close to a finish point, and l later when it dries a little bit more, I will put in some of the. Uh, the shimmering light on these palm fronds. Okay, let's see, stepping back again. close. I am going to grab some of this pure teal, this, um, this beautiful teal color here, which I'm hoping you can see, and let that pop my, uh, my closest cocoa palm here, a little bit of that beautiful color. Okay, we're getting getting close to the stopping point. A little tiny bit of that teal down in this foliage down below. Um, This warmer color here is, is Indian yellow. To give a little bit more depth to these palm fronds here, I'm using some really deep green. I 
could do the same with some of this phthalo blue, just using that as a really deep shadowy color in the palm fronds. Just touching up the shadowy side of the palm, the trunk of the palm tree here. Okay, got all my brushes, and let me have a look, final look, and. Uh, I hope this is still filming. My battery's almost dead, so I think it's still going. Okie doke. That's going to be it for, for this painting session, I think. Uh, later, I will do a little bit more with the, like I said, the shimmering light on the leaves of the palm fronds, and maybe a little more illumination on the trunks of the trees. So let me just bring this in closer. You can just zoom in. Kind of get an idea of what that looks like up close. Well, there we have it. That was a fun painting session zoom back out a little bit here. Okay, I'm glad you were with me here today. Uh, I'll play around with a few more little touch-ups on that, and um, we'll call it done for now. Okay, have a beautiful day. Remember to be kind to others. This is an amazing time in our lives where we can make a difference in the world. And it only happens like, I think, one person at a time, one moment at a time, just looking for a way to make it a little bit better world. Hope you enjoyed this. Please share it with friends and um, come again. Hey, we've got some sunshine slipping through, lighting up that canvas a little bit. All right, enjoy. Bye-bye. Here are the final touch-ups. Uh, deepening the trunks on the trees, putting some more saturated color up under the canopy, and uh, there it is. Hope you enjoyed this all, and uh, please subscribe and share with others. That's what I do this for. And uh, make it a wonderful day. Remember to celebrate the gift of life.